ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, impacts lives, especially in children. Children with ADHD have problems learning, concentrating and following instructions, which can further impact their learning abilities in school or college, and they may find it hard to get good grades. Children with ADHD find it hard to stick to routines, which makes it difficult for them to get up for school and to organise themselves. They also find it hard to fall asleep and get a good night's rest. This can cause them to become irritable with the lack of sleep and could impact on them not being on time and being late for lessons since sticking to a timetable is hard for them. They have difficulties in forming and maintaining relationships which could cause them to be alienated and they may become isolated and insular as a result. The lack of being able to stick to a routine problems sleeping and problems getting up also disrupts home life and also makes it difficult to maintain positive relationships with their parents and siblings and they're often tired and irritable. They're also difficult to discipline as they cannot control their behaviour which can cause issues in social situations and activities. ADHD in adults can cause difficulties in managing a home with the lack of routine and not being able to be organised. Lack of sleep will also be a factor in them being irritable and tired as well as not being able to organise their time and activities. This can cause them to experience isolation as they find it hard to form, maintain and develop relationships. This affects their working life. A lack of routine and organisation can mean they're often late for work and leave unfinished and uncompleted tasks. Problems with following instructions can lead to them not having a career, having many low paid jobs and having periods of unemployment. This in turn can lead to financial difficulties and stress serving to increase their ADHD. ADHD has an effect on others. A lack of routine can affect siblings and parents at home with parents finding it hard to discipline the child and this can disrupt the rest of the household. Siblings may also feel stressed, abandoned, jealous or resentful with more attention going towards the child with ADHD. Since the condition runs in families, there may be more than one child with the condition within a family. Other members of the family could also feel resentment as social activities and outings within a family could be more burdensome instead of enjoyable with a person suffering from ADHD. Carers and families of people and children with ADHD may have to take time off from work to care for them. This could lead to less income for the family and may lead to debt causing stress and possible resentment. Colleagues at work can find themselves with extra work from unfinished and uncompleted tasks. This could lead to resentment as it takes up time and their own work could be suffering as a result. For children and teenagers with ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, it helps to give clear specific instructions to them. Instead of suggesting to them to do something, it's better to give them an order and tell them directly to do it. Children and teens suffering from ADHD cope with things much better when they know in advance what's going to happen. Having a daily routine that's broken down in small steps can be very beneficial to them since it helps them know what to do. These routines become particularly important at bedtime as this helps with the disruption of sleep. Setting boundaries for the child or teen with ADHD is also important, as is ensuring they know these boundaries. Giving specific positive feedback to them and praising them is a good way of letting them know when they're doing the right thing. Setting up incentives where the child can earn rewards for good behaviour is also important, as the rewards can be removed to let the child know if they have misbehaved or overstepped any boundaries. Eating a healthy, well-balanced diet and daily exercise is a great and healthy way for children to use up excess energy and improve sleeping patterns. Avoiding processed foods and foods that contain a high sugar content will also help with a good night's sleep, as well as being beneficial to overall body health. 
Awareness of what triggers certain behaviours and signs of losing self-control may help the child and the parents avoid some of these problems. It may mean keeping social situations short and at a time when the child is not feeling tired or hungry. It means being sensitive to signs that the child is becoming frustrated or tired and distracting them or removing them from the situation. The condition will almost certainly affect children at school. Their schools should be made aware of the condition and advised about ways to help the child. Many schools will have experienced special needs teachers who will know how best to support the child in school and may be able to offer advice to parents and carers. Adults with ADHD should be encouraged to make routines for themselves and stick to them. The use of diaries, lists, notes and other reminders will be very useful for them in helping to manage their daily lives. Having a healthy diet with exercise can be very beneficial to them too. Although there's no proven link between ADHD and food additives, sugar or caffeine, these can appear to aggravate symptoms in some individuals. A healthy diet would cut out highly processed foods and sugary foods as well as caffeine. Exercise will help use up excess energy and improve sleep patterns. Awareness of what triggers certain behaviours and the signs that indicate loss of self-control may help the individual and their carer avoid some problems. For adults with ADHD, the condition will almost certainly affect them at work. It may be worth them talking to their employer about their condition and the sort of things that can help support them in their jobs. Large workplaces will have mechanisms for supporting adults with disabilities and illnesses. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder appears to run in families, which suggests a genetic link. If the parents or siblings of an individual have ADHD, then they are approximately four times more likely to experience ADHD. However, the exact genetic link has not been identified. Research has identified a number of possible differences in the brains of people with ADHD from those without the condition. Studies involving brain scans have suggested that certain areas of the brain may be smaller in people with ADHD, whilst other studies have suggested that people with ADHD may have an imbalance in the level of neurotransmitters in the brain. It's been suggested that factors such as difficult family circumstances, poor child management and social and environmental factors such as poverty may be a cause of ADHD. Again, there's no conclusive research and some of these factors, such as a disruptive home life, may be caused by the ADHD rather than the other way around. The effects of sugar and food additives on children's behaviour could also be a cause. It's been suggested that various biological factors may contribute to ADHD. These include factors such as premature birth, a low birth weight, brain damage before birth or as a young baby, exposure to drugs, excessive alcohol or smoking in the womb, and exposure to high levels of lead in early years. However, more research is needed to understand the effects of these factors on ADHD. It's thought that if they do have an effect, it's likely to be one of aggravating the symptoms rather than causing the illness. A lack of exercise and a lack of sleep are also thought to aggravate the symptoms. There's no cure for ADHD. Some GPs will refer cases for treatment to a specialist with medication to be taken and monitored. There are four types of drugs that are licensed for treating ADHD in children and teenagers. They all work by increasing brain activity in the parts of the brain that control attention and behaviour. There's only one that can be used in children under the age of six. There's also atomexetine, which works differently. It increases noradrenaline in the brain. This is the chemical that passes messages between brain cells, so increasing it can help concentration. All of these drugs have side effects, such as dizziness, loss of appetite, headaches, diarrhea and sickness, mood swings, drowsiness and aggression, with suicidal thoughts as a serious side effect. 
However, there are various training and therapies that can be accessed for those with ADHD and also for parents and carers of children with ADHD. Educating the individual with talk therapy helps them understand their condition and also how it affects those around them. As they become more aware of their condition, they learn how to manage and cope with it better and also how to behave in social situations. Parents can also be taught how to manage the behaviour of their children with ADHD. Through awareness, they can learn techniques how to improve behaviour and concentration. Behaviour therapy involves offering incentives to encourage positive behaviour and removing privileges to discourage negative behaviour. It's usually offered to parents, teachers, carers and those who look after children and teenagers with ADHD. CBT, that's Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, is a talking therapy used for many mental conditions and involves trying to change the way the individual thinks and feels about a situation so that they can change their behaviour. Self-help groups can be particularly useful since they're usually held locally and can provide support and be a valuable source of information. If you or someone you know need help for managing ADHD, then please see the links below to organisations and charities based in the UK offering advice and support. Thank you for listening.